in any programming language knowing standard library is a must but knowing the language ecosystem very well makes you a productive developer java has a very rich ecosystem of frameworks and libraries in this video i would like to show you five libraries that i think every java developer should be aware of number 5 eclipse collections java provides a wide range of collection types as part of java collection framework itself in addition to that eclipse collections provides a lot more new types of collection types and also provides a wide range of features like supports eager lazy serial and parallel iteration patterns and also provides uh, new collection types like um, bags multi map by map interval types and also it provides mutable and immutable uh, collection types as well in addition to that when compared to uh, memory efficiency with the core uh, jdk collections uh, some of the uh, collections provide much better performance and also you can do lazy iterations or the parallel iterations uh, in a much more efficient way so i would i would recommend to definitely take a look at this eclipse collections and there is a good amount of uh, documentation also number 4 record builder Java 16 introduced the concept of records which you can use to create an immutable object but i would like to have a couple of uh, quality of life improvements for this record feature first one is being able to use a builder pattern and uh, the another one is to be able to create a new record from an existing record and only be able to change few of the properties right now if you want to create a new record uh, you need to copy all the data from the existing record and then update what are the values that you want to update it's a, it is doable but it is a little bit of uh, boilerplate code so here uh, there is a, a proposal in 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 the discussions to uh, support these features but right now we have a record builder uh, library that uh, allows us to do those two things having a uh, builder pattern supported and also be able to create a new record from the existing record let's see how we can use this feature so basically record builder is an annotation processor that means it is going to uh, look at your source code and then based on the annotations that you add it is going to generate the builder pattern uh, source code so how do we use that library we will add record builder core Uh, with a provided scope, and then we are going to plug in this annotation processor with Maven compiler plugin. So with this configured, and if we add this record builder annotations to our records, it is going to generate a customer builder, whatever the uh, record name, and it is going to create a new class with uh, the name and builder suffix. So once we configure the plugin. you can see under target there is a generated source folder and here you can see customer builder class is generated and you can use this class in a uh, in your code base so here let us take a look at how we can use this customer uh, builder so right now if we take a look at this test this is a normal uh, uses of a record we create an instance using uh, all args constructor and we have verified the properties but now this is how you can use the customer builder you can create an instance of customer builder and then um, provide all the values and then you can create an instance like this okay another uh, feature that i mentioned is be able to copy the values from an existing record and then only change certain properties right so here there is another uh, record called address which has a bunch of properties and then we will be uh, able to copy all the uh, data from the existing record like this address builder dot builder and provide that instance and then you can change what are the properties that you want to change okay so here it is going to take all the values from this record and then only update uh, street and state values and then you can verify uh, the record data here like this okay and in addition to uh, be able to change uh, properties like this Uh, another uh, approach is using withers withers in the sense instead of saying uh, street uh, you you could say with street so how do we do that in addition to adding this annotation at record builder we can also implement uh, dot address builder dot with so what does this do it is going to generate methods like with street with city with state like that so how we can use that 
so here is a address instance and then we are uh, creating a new address by calling with street and with state so it is going to take all the data from this first address one record and then only update the values to street and state so it is kind of a similar to this approach but it is a preference like somebody prefers to call it as with so this is also supported this is fine uh, because we uh, we own these classes and we are able to add these annotations and then we can use the builder pattern and with us what about the third party source code uh, let's say some third party library is providing these records and i want to use builder pattern for those classes as well how do we do that so there is a support for that so let us say this product class is uh, from a third party source code uh, okay and obviously we cannot add our own annotations to that uh, source code so what we can do we can create a class and then we can use this uh, record builder dot include and provide all the classes here and uh, the the annotation annotation processor will scan and then generate the builders for these classes as well let's say here if you take a look at this uh, target generated sources you can also see product builder class is also generated so this is how you can use uh, builder pattern for the third party source code as well and how do we here you can see we are creating an instance of product using builder like this okay so that is how you can use this library called record builder to create a builder pattern and also be able to copy an existing record and then create a new record by overriding some of the properties this is very handy while using records number three map struct Mapstruct is a mapping library that can help you to map data from one object to another object. In a typical Java application which uses layered approach, let's say we have entity on the persistence layer, but we don't want to pass the entities to the web layer. So we typically create an, a DTO data transfer object and then copy the data into DTO and then send it as a response. In such scenarios, it is very tedious to write all the mapping code by hand. So this Mapstruct library helps you to automatically generate the mapping code based on the configuration that we provide. So Mapstruct uses an annotation processor and generates the classes, actual classes, instead of using reflection. So it is going to be a much uh, faster compared to the uh, reflection based approach uh, libraries. There are other libraries that uses reflection, but uh, Mapstruct uses a uh, code generation approach, which will be much more performing. How do we configure Mapstruct? So we we can add this Mapstruct dependency and also we need to uh, add this annotation processor uh, called Mapstruct processor and hook it up with the Maven compiler plugin. So this way uh, it will uh, scan through the code and then automatically generate the uh, mapper uh, implementations. Let us see how we can use that. So here we have a record called user which has id name email and password properties let's say we have a dto that has id full name and email address so here some properties are same but some properties are uh, different because this is how we want to send the data to the front end or as a response to a restful api but we would like to map name to full name and we would like to map email to uh, email address and we don't want to include password so here we want to copy the data from user to user dto how we can uh, do that using mapstruct so here we can create a an interface user mapper and then you can define this uh, method which says uh, to user dto whichever uh, name you prefer and then you pass user object and then you return user dto by default if you don't add any explicit mappings it tries to map based on the name if they are uh, having the same name it will try to map the uh, property values from user to user dto but if the uh, property names are different this is how you can explicitly mention hey take the name property value from user object and copy it to full name property of the user dto similarly email property value into email address property in the user dto this is how you can configure to map the data so once you have this configuration and uh, don't forget to add this at mapper annotation and mapstruct will scan this class and then it will automatically generate this user mapper impl 
so here you can see this uh, has the mapping implementation okay a common usage pattern is to define an instance of a uh, user mapper like this by obtaining uh, mapper implementation from mapper start get mapper method and then wherever you want to use you can use like this instance and pass in the user object and you will get a user TTO okay it is uh, as simple as that in addition to this um, mapstract also provides extensions to use with spring and cdi also which generates the code and annotated with at component or something like that so that you will be able to inject uh, these mapper instances into other spring beans this is really helpful to automatically generate the mapping codes otherwise it is going to be a uh, pain to write all the mapping code uh, by hand number two high persistence utils JPA and Hibernate are most widely used persistence libraries in the Java world. In, in Java, if you ever used a Hibernate ORM framework, you most likely might have read articles from Vlad blog. Okay, he is the author of High Persistence Utils and uh, this library provides various facilities for JSON mappings. For example, if you are trying to map JSON columns to your objects, you can use these JSON mapping features and also uh, here you can see a list of articles that demonstrate how to use High Persistence library for mapping uh, JSON type columns to your objects and also array type mappings and database specific type mappings like PostgreSQL, Unum, things like that. In addition to uh, Hibernate specific features, there are some Spring data uh, related uh, features as well uh, with uh, some improvements and things like that. So if you are using uh, JPA and Hibernate, I would definitely recommend you to check out this High Persistence Utils library. Number one, Arc Unit. While building our applications, we might want to follow certain architectural principles and patterns. For example, we might want to follow uh, package by feature uh, based packaging structure or we might want to follow hexagonal architectural style patterns. So how do we enforce these patterns into our code base? So this is where our unit helps us to express our architectural concerns as unit tests so that if any developer violates uh, those principles, our unit test will fail and then we'll get to know uh, which principle is violated. So how do we use them? So here is an example where we are defining uh, various layers and we are saying which package structure contains those components. Here we define web uh, layer which contains this package structure and there is a config uh, layer service uh, layer and a persistence layer so once we define these layers here are our uh, architectural concerns we are expressing where layer web may not be accessed by any LA, any layer so typically web layer components like controllers are not directly to be called by any of our code they are called by uh, frameworks so similarly a where layer a service may only be accessed by uh, layers config and web and also uh, where layer persistence may only be accessed by layers service so this is how we can express our concerns that a persistence layer component should only be called by a service layer and uh, service layer should only be called by config or web layers something like that so by mistake, if any developer would uh, try to call any uh, config layer component from persistence layer, it will throw error. Okay. So similarly, another common uh, highly recommended uh, principle is should not use field injection in a Spring Boot based applications. So this is how we can simply express that concern. No field should be annotated with auto -wide. So if you, if anybody tries to use this auto -wide, uh, based uh, field based injection, it will uh, fail the uh, test. And also uh, we can enforce certain naming conventions as well. For example, if you want to name all our repositories to end with repository and all our services with service. So things like that. You can express all those conventions as unit tests. If anybody violates this, it will automatically fail. 
In addition to that, you should not use JUnit 4 for uh, any new projects and you should always be using JUnit 5. So by mistake, maybe uh, people accidentally add JUnit 4 and instead of using at test annotation from JUnit 5, they might accidentally import the classes from JUnit 4. So using this test, it will ensure that you are not uh, using any JUnit 4 classes or JUnit 4 based annotations and by mistake if you use it this test will fail. So like this you can express all your uh, packaging structure uh, and architectural concerns using ArchUnit. So this is really helpful to keep the uh, whatever the uh, principles that we agreed upon to put it into practice. These are some of my favorite Java libraries for various purposes. Please let me know what is your favorite Java library in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.